definitely keep y'all lifted up in prayer. Amen. All right. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash. Look at somebody and say, doing all to stand. Amen. I had a situation, and it ain't your business, but I had a situation I was dealing with. And I said, you know, talking to the Lord about it. And, and I said, and God told me you, you need to call somebody. So I called one of my superiors, somebody that I placed over myself to get advice. Called him to get some advice, and he began to talk to me and you know, tell me some things, whatever, handle it like this. I would do it this way, this, 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 you know, but you do what God tells you, you know, you handle it the way God says. So, hung up with him, and the Holy Spirit spoke this to me. He said, are you doing all to stand? And so my first thought was Donnie McClurkin's song. After you've done all you can, you can stand. So I said, Lord, I've done all I can. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me again and said, but are you doing all to stand? Because it's not the same thing. Let me explain. Amen. The cyber age that we live in is making us all desire things too quickly. Even when it comes to growth and maturity, we want it to happen overnight. That's why folks don't go to church. Did you know that? People stop going to church because they want growth and maturity overnight. They don't want process. Because if they go through a process, they have to put someone over them. And because they're angry with the authorities that raised them or angry with an authority that hurt them, they don't want an authority. But you have to have an authority during a process. The cyber age we live in is making us all desire things too quick and folks want growth and maturity too quickly. Ecclesiastes 7 8 says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the what? Patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Why did they put patience and proud there? Because the person that wants to do it quickly and don't want to go through the process has a pride issue. They're worried about what people's go people are going to think of them. That's a pride issue. But it's better to just be patient. Amen. Amen. I never forget. I went to this dealership, you know, and I was just trying to get a car. Had just a little, you ever just had just a little money? It's a little money went to this dealership and this guy told me he said man here's your you know he said man you you preaching you a preacher man you know you need to be driving this BMW I said man I you know I can't get that I don't have the credit I don't have to I just you know I, I can't be driving that that's gonna cost me maintenance all he said man look all the preachers come through here he said so what I do I take your your W what, what did he say he, he, your W2 change a few numbers on it and load it in the computer and I get you into any one of these cars for the same price you drive and that way you can look the part you can look the part you remember that baby and I said man do I want to look the part and not be the part I mean it just I just you know so I told him I said hey man for, you know I turn, I'm, I'm turning you down He's like, what? Then he started naming famous people. That's how they drive it, what they drive it. I said, well, I'm sorry, bro. I, I, I'm not doing that. I said, if I can't get it, like, then I can't give God credit for giving it to me if I can't get it the right way. So I don't want to be no imposter out here, man. So I just take the Isuzu Rodeo or whatever I got. I just take the rodeo, dude. I be driving it. I know. I take it by my uncle's house. Him and Aaron would think I, they'll make me feel like I got a Rolls Royce. And that's what I did. I got that rodeo. I took it by. Remember, I brought it by the house. His daddy was like, oh, man. Boy. Boy, you, you, you stepping up in the world. I mean, he made me feel so good. That's what they did. 
I said, <laughs> but I had to get what I could get. I, you know, and I wanted my process. I, I wanted it when my process would allow me to have it. You know what? The, because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, if I don't get it the right way, I'm probably not going to be able to keep it. And I definitely don't want them coming to get it. So let me do it God's way so that I can keep it. You see what I'm saying? So I'll go through the process. The end is better. In the beginning, it was hard. But the end is better because I was patient in spirit in that situation. Not, not that I'm perfect. A lot of stuff I had to grow to and all of that. But that thing, I just didn't care what people thought. And you should be glad about that because it's the same with this church. We ain't spending no money that we don't have to ask these dudes. You better ask these folks. Ask them. We ain't just gonna buy it because we have the money. So we can look like. But being able to have instant access to information, money, goods, and services without even leaving our home has made us anxious for things. Philippians 4 and 6 says, do not be anxious about how many things? Anything, nothing. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Most people today are just undone. They're not finished. That's the generation we're dealing with, people that aren't finished. They started their process, but they quit. They're not finished. That's why they argue with you and debate you and all that, because they, they're not finished. They're undone undone. Ever ate undone chicken? That'll make you sick. I won't eat at Boston Market to this day. They chicken be skirting the edge. It'll be done, but man, it's like right there. So if you don't have the correct immune response, are they gone? Oh, good. Oh, well, I can talk about it. I'll try to be conservative. Boy, that chicken was jive. Pink. Pink. Always pink. Even in the pot pot, the chicken was pink. Yeah, but you don't want nothing undone. It's going to make you sick. When something's not cooked well, there's stuff that lives inside of it. Bacteria and certain things. That'll contaminate you and make you sick. Well, that's how people are when they're undone. They're contaminated. They're not finished. They have an issue. Without a process and patience, we cannot be entire or whole. We can't be done without a process and patience. Lack in patience causes us to be incomplete or unfinished. Y'all know how deep that is? If you don't have patience, you can't go through a process to finish. You jump out of the oven too early. You're not done. You're undone because you wouldn't allow the process to complete. Amen. God set a time, but you jumped out before the bell rang. You're undone. Oh, I can back it up with scripture. James 1 and 4 says, but let patience what? Have her what? Let patience perfect you. So that you may be perfect and this word, what? You know what entire is? Whole. Done. Yeah. Wanting nothing. You don't want nothing when you're done. I don't need any more ingredients when it's done. Look at somebody say, when it's done, it's done. I don't need the recipe anymore when it's done. So you got to let patience have a perfect work. Everyone has a process that God has taken them through to become what he desires for them to be. But many of our processes are not being completed and we are not seeing the results that we should see as believers. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with such a great crowd of witnesses. Let us lay aside the sin, the weight, the sin which easily besets us or gets in our way and run, the, run with what? 
patience the race, the course that is what? Set before us. Finish the course. Sin comes to weigh you down so you can't finish the process. Many stand firm for a while until they get distracted, discouraged, or unhappy with things and then give up on what they were once standing firm on. Have you done all to stand? The pastor, my, oh, on my job, they just tripping. Well, have you done all to stand? My marriage is just, have you done all? Yeah. No, you haven't. That's a rhetorical question. You can't answer that. You still alive and your situation still jacked? You can't answer that. You got to finish the process. See where this is going. Luke 9 and 62. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You're not fit for the kingdom if you don't finish. You're not fit for the kingdom if you don't see it all the way through. God's process takes more than wheel power to complete. How many of you know that? Amen. How many of you have tried your old wheel power? Oh Lord, this time I know I can. I I know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Willpower don't look at somebody say willpower don't work. It don't work. It'll work in that moment because you all hyped up. But it, willpower is not enough. But God's process takes more than willpower. We must have God's power. To endure the whole process and keep standing. That's why people quit. Because they are operating in their own power. Nobody filled with the Holy Ghost going to quit. Holy Ghost won't let you quit. Holy Ghost will interrupt your sleep and make you pray about that process. Holy Ghost won't let you sleep. Have you ever been in the bed and just couldn't sleep? You trying to avoid the elephant in the room. God's not going to let you do it. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So we got to have this power and able, uh, uh, to enable us to complete our processes. He's able to do it even when we, it looks like we failed. His power can keep us going. Amen. Anybody ever failed? But look at somebody and say, I'm still going. That's his power. Amen. When I see a bum on the street, that dude didn't have the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, he wouldn't be a bum on the street. Yeah. Yeah. He wouldn't have succumbed to that. Now, he can still go to heaven. The Bible said the poor man went to, the beggar went to heaven. He can go to heaven, but man, he's in hell right now. Especially on Texas streets. I was complaining about my air conditioning messing up last night. And I just thought the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, man, you know what a luxury this air is? I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you for 81 degrees in my upstairs. That's hot, but thank you, Lord. They, go, they come in to fix it, and then I say, thank you, Lord, for the money to fix it. The price they quoted me was so biting. It was, I'm just on this now. That should have never happened yesterday. But the, the prices just done went up crazy. But I thank God I got the money. Amen. Now, can't nobody else in the house spend nothing for a couple of weeks. But that's okay. I thank God. So I have to thank God for those things. You don't want to be sitting up. Oh, no, the air is out. Oh, God, where are you? Got to take your toe and put it in hell so you can feel. You want to go there? <laughs> your toe would be a Brazilian nut.
<laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> My mom laughing because, you know, the older people, they know what they used to call Brazilian nuts. <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> can't say it in here. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I am, I am who the Bible says I am. And I have what the Bible says I have. And I can do what the Bible says I can do. Amen. Wake up every day and say that. Because we believe the Bible. The Bible doesn't say after you have done all you can, you must stand. That song is wrong. I know you love it, but it's a feel-good song. It's not biblically accurate. Amen. God rebuked me because, you know, I be using it too. Oh, but after I've done all I can, I'll just stand. No, nah, that ain't what it says. But rather, the Bible says, having done all to stand. And that's it. Ephesians says, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Yeah, this is deep. This, this got me. This means you are doing everything that the word says to stand and not just doing all that you are capable of doing. Because that all that I put bold, having done all, that all is putting on the whole armor of God. He told you two times before this to put on the whole armor of God. That's the all. Look at somebody and say, that's the all. The all is the armor of God. It ain't what you can do. Because what you can do got you in trouble in the first place. Look at somebody. Yeah, you're not good enough for that. No, the all is what he prescribed in the passage, Ephesians 6. He's talking, he's saying what you're up against. Then he says what you have to do. And you got to do all of what he said you have to do. Doing all the stand. This means you are doing everything that the word says to stand and not just doing all that you're capable of doing. Jeremiah says, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord. So flesh can't be your arm. Flesh can't be your armor. It can't protect you. And you're cursed if you trust in your own strength. You'll fail. You got to have the all. Our power is not enough. Our strength is not enough. We must do all that the word of God tells us to do to be able to stand and finish God's course. Matthew 7 and 7, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open. Have you done those things? Quit asking people what should you do and the Bible just told you what to do. Ask, seek, knock. Summary. Very simple message. This is, this is just simple stuff. The Bible gives us the all that we must do in order to stand. What is the all? The armor. Tells us right here. This is the all. It said, having done all to stand, having done all, all that you're supposed to do to stand, not what you think you should do, not all that you can do. That puts the capability on you. If it's all that you can do. No, it's got to be all that he says do. What did he say do? Stand therefore. He explains it right after he said, having done all to stand. What is the all? 
having your loins girt about with the truth. Have you told the real truth about the situation? Have you dealt with the truth about you? Have you dealt with the truth about whatever it is you're dealing with? Are you really dealing with the truth? Have you told the truth? See, we see these as armor. Oh, I'm going to put the helmet on. And I used to do it. I used to put the helmet on and the breastplate and the belt and all that. And God said, you can't do that. This is a process. These are things he want in you. Paul was next to a Roman soldier. He was using this to illustrate the placement of things. But he wasn't saying to actually pick it up and put it on because it takes a process to get this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Having your loins girt about with the truth, that takes a process for you to become a truth believer and a truth teller. Some of y'all first heard the truth behind hip hop. You didn't want to hear it. You kept your Jay Z. Yes, you did. You didn't want to hear it. God had to work that process and show you what it was doing to you, show what it was doing to your life. Show what it was doing to him. And then you say, look, Lord, I surrender. Get it all. Take it all. See, that was a process. Amen. Amen. You could just burn all your CDs. Here they all are. You know you kept one. (laughs) Yeah, some people can. Some people can, but it's a process. Maybe that person was already working that process before they heard the message. You see what I'm saying? These things are a process. So having the breast of uh, uh, the uh, your loins girt about with the truth, and then having the breastplate of righteousness. What's the breastplate of righteousness? Living right. Are you living right? That's a process. Some things you're doing you shouldn't be doing, and you don't know until it's preached and told to you. That's a process. Can I keep preaching? Feet shy with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Are you prepared to bring peace to situations? This is the good one. Yeah, when you arguing and bickering, do you have peace to bring to that situation? Between you and your wife? Between you and your kids? Between you and your father, your mother? Your neighbor? Uh, above all take in the shield of faith you can't be just no it's not physical like that faith is a shield when you have the belief when you really believe and have faith it becomes a shield then you're able to quench all how much is all all the fiery darts of the wicked they keep bothering me. They keep, they just won't leave me alone. They did they, they, they got the shield of faith. Is it protecting you? Take on the helmet of salvation. That means you have the mind of Christ. The helmet is the, was the closest thing to the head. Taking on the mind of Christ. Are you handling situations like Jesus would? The situation that's before you, are you handling that the way God would have you? Are you in your feelings? You know, the end of your feelings thing, I made fun of that last week. That was the first thing this dude told me when I called him. He said, man, you in your feelings. I said, ugh, am I? He said, yeah. He said, everybody get in their feelings. That for a brief moment, Jesus got in his feelings. Garden of Gethsemane. We're humans. But he didn't make a decision in his feelings. That's the big, that's, he was in his feelings. If there's any other way, God, let this cup pass from me. But then right after that, kenosis kicked in. Not my will, but thy will be done. So he didn't react in his feelings. Man, I'm preaching in this place. Helmet of salvation and then the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Man, are you reading the Bible? Have you read what the word says about that situation? 
Have you found an example in the Bible of that situation being rectified? Are you using the sword of the spirit in this situation? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. You getting up too quick? Have you prayed about it long enough? I've been praying. I hate people say that. I've been praying like there's a cutoff. I've been praying. And it's time to do something different now. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the rest of that is. I've been praying. No, you keep praying. The Bible says praying always, meaning keep praying. You keep praying until you get the answer. Have you done that? That's all. Prayer and supplication in the spirit. And then are you watching? Thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Are you looking out basically for that other person that's involved in this? Or have you considered them at all over yourself? That'll rectify a whole lot of stuff when you consider them over you. Man, the claps, the hand claps are bogus. But that's okay. I don't preach for claps. I know this is a good message. I know it is. Oh, yes. It's kicking you in the chest. Somebody getting donkey kicked. Because you thought you could just go to somebody and get an answer. And God is saying, have you done all? Have you done all? Without these things, we cannot stand. It's not about doing all that we can do. It's about doing all that God says to do. And his prescription for standing is flawless and effective. Amen. Don't come to me telling me you quit. Because if you tell me you're quitting, then I know you haven't done all. Paul reminds Christians that all of these tools are critically important. God's armor is a package. Look at somebody and say package. God's armor is a package, not a buffet. It's a package. You don't go through and pick the, the, the helmet of salvation and now, yeah, that's all I need right now. No, it all goes together. Having done all, all of it. It's not a buffet of items from which we can select from. If you are having trouble standing, then check your regimen. Make sure you are doing all that is prescribed before you give up on it. Every issue you are facing can be resolved if you stand the way God says to stand. Amen? Amen. Second Peter 1 and 5. And besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. So don't just have faith, but have morality too. That's virtue. Godly morality. Add that to your faith. Live right and watch things happen. Have faith and add living right to it. And then to living right, get knowledge. And then add to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, which is self-control, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, what? Brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall never neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you acting like this, you're going to be okay. Your situation is going to get resolved. It's going to get rectified. God is going to rule in your favor. I, hey, hey, y'all. Y'all better listen to this. Yeah, all of this. Add faith. Add virtue to the faith. Knowledge to the virtue. Self-control to the knowledge. Patience to the self-control. And godliness to the patience. And then brotherly kindness to the godliness and love to the brotherly kindness. Man, when you do that, I promise you, 
that's when you see results as a Christian. That's when other people will be able to know that you saved and not just you. But he that doesn't do this stuff, lack these things, he's blind and he can't see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you'll be able to stand. And you will never fall because you will keep standing. Everybody stand to your feet. You know, some folk don't like these kind of messages. Oh, I want you to show Beyonce and uh, crooked preachers. <laughs> you don't have a montage to show today? Nope. The montage today is all of us. We all be on it. Because we all thought that we could just do all that we can do and then just keep standing. And that's not what the Bible says. We have to do what God says. Amen? Amen. Amen. Is it easy? No. Because it's spiritual things that's going against what your flesh wants. That's never easy. But is it possible? Definitely. And is it mandatory? Yes. If you want to stand. Amen? So I don't know what situations you got going on. But if you need strength to stand and apply these things, to do the all to stand, I want you to just come up. I'm going to believe God with you. I need my situation. What's going on with me? What's going on with my family? What's going on with my children? What's going on with my job? What's going on with whatever? I want to stand. I want to stand. I'm not seeing the results that I would like to see. They're not happening as fast. Well, maybe, maybe this is a part of the process. You standing and applying all, doing all. Are you doing all to stand? Help me with the all, Lord. You got to do the all. Praise God for the power of the Holy Ghost that gives us the power to stand, gives us the power to do the all to stand. And we keep it before the Lord until we get the results that we're standing for. What I'm standing for, Lord, I'm going to believe that it's going to happen. But I got to make sure I'm doing all. Not all that I can, all you said, Lord. Ephesians 6, 13. All you said. Your prescription. Your regimen. If you do that, you won't fail. You won't fall. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you, Father God, for the truth of this word. And thank you, Father God, that your prescription is flawless. What you have prescribed with your word, what Paul wrote is all that we need. It's the all we must do to stand. So God, we pray right now for the insight, the ability, and the strength and courage to do all to stand. All that you prescribe, to put on the whole armor of God so that we will be able to stand there for. Come on, lift your hands up. Father God, give us strength in these areas where we're weak. Give us mercy in these areas. Give us grace in these areas. Give us time in these processes. Father God, help us to become what you want us to be and be able to rightly apply your prescription for us to stand. And we will do all that you say do to stand. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Amen. You know, salvation is instant. It's instantaneous. Once you believe and registers, the Spirit comes, Jesus comes, lives in your heart, you're saved. But at that point, for a lot of people, and I, they tell me this, seem like all kinds of crazy stuff start happening in. Well, those are processes. Stuff you did, most of it's your fault, and it's stuff that has to be fixed. And things, I just gave you the prescription to deal with all of it. That's it. If you use God's prescription that I just read to you, you will never fall. Yeah. Because it's not your strength. Now unto him that is able to keep me from falling. Present me faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Savior, it's him. It's him, not us. So if you follow this prescription I gave you, you will never fall. And what you're standing against, what you're standing on, you'll see it come to pass. You'll see the results you're looking for. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hug somebody and say, I'm going to keep standing. <laughs> Having done all. Having done all. Having done all. Not after you've done all you can. Having done all to stay. Amen? And this ain't no knock on Donnie McClurkin. You know, folk write songs because of the way they feeling at the moment. And okay, yeah. But the Bible says, having done